This is the Less Insurance Dependence Podcast Show with my good friend Gary Takas and myself, Narain Arul Raja. We appreciate your listenership, your time, and most of all, we appreciate your intention to reduce insurance dependence in your practice. Our goal is to provide information that will help you successfully reduce insurance dependence and convert your practice into a thriving and profitable dental practice that provides you with personal, professional, and financial satisfaction. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Less Insurance Dependence Podcast, the official podcast of the Reducing Insurance Dependence Academy, www.rid.academy. Before we jump in, I wanted to wish everyone a happy, happy, happy new year, 2024. I know this episode is coming out on December 28th. So um, just wanted to take a minute to a thank you for being with us for the last four plus years, actually five plus years. And um, as we look forward to our sixth year, uh, we couldn't have done this without you. So thank you and um, take a moment to enjoy this time of the year and uh, recharge for the awesome 2024 we all gonna create together. The RID.academy is a membership only academy and Gary and I are gifting the membership to you as our gift to you in appreciation for your listenership. You can take advantage of this offer by going to RID.academy and signing up. Once again, it's RID.academy. I am Narain, your co-host. Today's top topic is one dentist surprise discovery when he resigned as a Delta, Delta PPO provider. One dentist surprise discovery when he resigned as a Delta PPO provider. Before we jump into the topic, we have um, uh, something we are doing to make a difference in the world. And uh, this is a brainchild of Janice Hurley and Gary. Uh, both of them have been friends for a long, long time. And I'll let Gary fill in you on the backstory. But to make a long story short, we are doing our very first uh, masterclass in 2024. This is going to be on the 16th of January from 8 to 10 p.m. And all proceeds are going to be gifted to Pastures of Grace Women's Program. Pastures of Grace Women's Program. It's a charity. And the particular masterclass is titled Mastering Confidence in Your Personal and Professional Life. Mastering Confidence in Your Personal and Professional Life. It's two hours of CE. Um, as you look forward to the new year and as you start creating it the way you want, one of the skill sets, tools, uh, expertise you need to have on how to build your confidence so you can be a better leader for yourself, your family, and of course, for your team. So you're going to get tons of advice and tons of tips that are very practical you can apply. Gary, your comments. Yeah, I'm super excited about this masterclass. Uh, as you've mentioned, Aaron, uh, Janice and I have been friends for many, many, many years. Uh, and we're excited about the topic. You know, I've made it my life's work to study world-class dentists. And Aaron, I have yet to meet a world-class dentist that didn't also have confidence. They go hand in hand. Uh, and there's a fine line between confidence and arrogance. Confidence is good. Yes. Arrogance, not so much. Um, so we're going to talk about, uh, as the title would imply, mastering confidence in your personal and professional lives. Very, very excited about that. Two hours. Uh, that is uh, January 16th. It's a Tuesday evening. Uh, it starts at 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. Uh, so go ahead and do the time conversion wherever you are. That would be 5 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. Uh, but come join us. We'd love to have you join us. Now, uh, we're doing this uh, to benefit a, a charity that is near and dear uh, to both Janice and I. Uh, the program is called Pastures of Grace. Uh, it's run by Jennifer uh, Clever. Jennifer is Janice's oldest daughter. Uh, and Jennifer and, and her husband, Mark, uh, have a ranch in Northern California. And uh, they are um, people that really uh, believe in lifting others up. And they've created this charity called Pastures of Grace. And what Pastures of Grace is all about is uh, helping young women in crisis. 
Uh, these are typically young moms that uh, are experiencing uh, challenges and a crisis in their life. And they provide um, a home, uh, they provide the guidance, they provide the values uh, to help these young women uh, break the, the, the cycle that many of these women are in. Uh, and they give them life skills. They give them parenting skills. They they give them relationship skills. They they give them work. Uh, it's a working ranch. Uh, they're out. Th these women are out working in the ranch, um, and it's just a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful program. Uh, it's all about uh, lifting these uh, young women up, uh, providing the support that they need at a critical time in their life, so they can break that pattern. Um, often it's a pattern of, of poverty and, and, and abuse, and um, uh, it's about changing all that. Um, and every dollar of your tuition goes 100% to Pastures of Grace. Uh, we're donating all of that. Uh, it is a nonprofit organization. You'll receive a, uh, 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 the ability to write off uh, your tuition. Uh, it's very inexpensive. It's less than $100. Um, come join us. Uh, go to uh, lessinsuranceindependence.com. Uh, forward slash masterclass and be sure to register. Um, can't wait to see you at that masterclass. It's really going to be a, uh, a great event uh, personally for you, but also uh, the ability to contribute to a cause that is so worthwhile. Um, hopefully that'll give you more confidence in your life just for, for uh, participating in that. So uh, come join us. Thank you, Harry. I know talking about confidence versus arrogance, I was just thinking um, some of the work we do uh, with our Equa clients is to convince them to help patients see them as friendly, uh, down to earth. So we encourage our clients to incorporate videos on the landing pages that are ranking on Google. So let's say you're ranking for veneers or implants. Uh, you go to that page because somebody Googled that you are number one or near the top. They go to that page. Um, the first thing you want to do is to get them to like you. And uh, one of the concerns that a lot of patients have about doctors is doctors are more educated than them. They know more than them. They, you know, typically they're in a higher social status than them. So how do you break that discomfort and how do you build that relationship right from the very first visit to your website? So creating simple videos where you don't use any jargon or any complex uh, medical terminology and rather explain things in layman's terms, right? And even the way you speak, just saying, welcome, hello, basics sometimes we don't realize how powerful the basics are and um, i i agree confidence is great but um but also it shouldn't be coming across as arrogance or i'm better than you right it has to come across like i'm just like you well and there's a way to um create um confidence in our marketing material in everything we do in the website right um, when someone visits the website, the patient, the visitor should experience the confidence that they're calling the right office. Exactly. Uh, there's a lot of, as you mentioned, something like a very personable video uh, can help them uh, feel like uh, they have the confidence to, uh, this is the right office. This is the one that they, they want to choose. So you're absolutely right. Thank you, Gary. Um, so looking forward to this. I think the cause is also a really, really worthy cause. And I think we are starting the year off the right way. So thank you for kind of uh, putting this together with Janice. And I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. Let's jump into today's topic. One dentist surprise discovery when he resigned as a Delta PPO provider. You know, I'm really I'm excited curious, about this. <laughs> you know, I'm really excited about sharing this uh, uh, this discovery. Uh, I think it'll be so useful for all of our listeners. So let me tell you the story. So this is a client in our Thriving Dentist Coaching, and uh, he's in uh, a larger town in Illinois. Um, very competitive, lots of other dentists. He's not in Chicago, but it's a larger town. I'll leave the the details out for confidentiality, but I'll I'll, I'll share with you what happened. And so as we're marching through resigning, as you know, Naren, um, many doctors feel like um, they can, with guidance and with some help and, and, and with some uh, uh, coaching, they can successfully resign from some of the smaller plans. But it's the bigger plans that usually scare them. Um, and Delta is usually the big 5,000 pound gorilla. Yes. Not always. Uh, sometimes in some states, it could be Aetna or it could be MetLife or something else. But in most offices, the 5,000 pound bully is, is Delta. And mm -hmm. sure enough, uh, Doc was saying, yeah, we're, we're doing really well resigning from these other plans. Man, I'm nervous about Delta. And that, that if you're thinking that in your own 
uh, as you're, you're thinking of your journey on this, as you're listening to this and you're thinking, Oh, Delta makes me nervous. You've got company <laughs> in every other dentist on I, the planet. I think I know this particular doctor. He's actually a mutual client. He's such an awesome gentleman, amazing yeah. team. He He's like um, what I would call a servant leader. He's yeah, so kind, a, a so servant. generous. Yeah, very yeah. kind, very thoughtful, very considerate, uh, leads by example. Uh, just every every way we think of a servant leader describes uh, this doctor. Well, mm -hmm. um, we had a Zoom meeting and and the doctor and the office manager is a great office manager. Um, said, man, we're worried about now. We know Delta is going to send the check to the patient. Uh, Delta, uh, you know, typically does that. They will not allow you to sign benefits. Many other PPO plans allow you to sign benefits, meaning that the PPO plan will still send you a check. If that's the case, I always advise my clients, accept assignment of benefits, check the box, let the insurance company send you the check. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that, it's less disruptive for the patient. It's, it, it's less of a hurdle to overcome. But Delta, of course, to be difficult, doesn't do that. They send the check to the patient. And so now for, let's take a, an adult hygiene appointment. In the past, when he was in network, patient didn't have to pay anything. Remember, that's covered at 100% by the, the Delta uh, PPO plan. And now uh, the office uh, is thinking that I've got to ask that patient for payment at time of service. And then Delta is going to reimburse the patient. Delta is going to send the patient a check. And so both doctor and the office manager said, that just makes me really nervous. And I think with our patient, we have a lot of regular blue collar, you know, working patients. And I'm concerned that, that that's going to be a deal breaker for a lot of them. I said, well, a lot of other dentists have felt that way. And what they found is, is that if you have a relationship driven practice like you, uh, yeah, it's it's different for them, but but most people go along with it. And they were saying, yeah, I, I hear you, Gary. I want to believe that, but I'm nervous about it. And so the office manager said, Gary, I came up with this idea and I want to run it by you. Here's what I'm thinking. What if we had the patient sign a credit or debit card authorization form? at the time of service. So we don't collect payment, but they just sign an authorization for us, provide a debit or, or credit card. We keep that on file. And then we run the charge three weeks later. We'll reach out to the patient, get approval to run the charge on that date. And, and then we'll run that charge three weeks later. So by then they will have gotten the check from Delta. And I said, well, I wouldn't recommend that. Uh, I Because of the, the, the extra workload that that's gonna take, um, and the fact that, it, you know, you're going to have some failures and it's, it's, it's going to be a challenge. I wouldn't recommend that, but you guys know your patients and we talked more about it. And I said, that is going to create an administrative burden on your practice. And the office manager said, you know, I've talked to, this is a larger office, multiple doctors and large hygiene. And she said, all of my business team members are on board with this. They think it's a good idea. Remember, Naren, uh, when, when it comes to getting the team on board, you're always going to be more successful if the team thinks it's their idea. <laughs> yes. Every time, <laughs> you know, no matter what you're doing, if, 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 if they think it's their idea, then they're going to get behind it. If, if they feel like you're pushing an idea on them, uh, then they often get, get pushback. So based on that, I, I turn to them and say, you know, you guys know your practice. You guys know your patients. I, I appreciate the creativity of your thinking. Um, and I appreciate getting the whole team on board, the whole admin team on board with this. And my suggestion is, well, I wouldn't do that myself. Hey, let's give it a try. Let's see what happens. And sure enough, they did that. And let me tell you what the surprise was, Naren. Here's the surprise. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. The surprise was, doctor said, so we debriefed this afterwards. And he said, Gary, you would not believe how many patients, when we presented this as an option, and we'll put a card on file. They just said, oh, never mind. Just run my card today. So the fear that they had was really in their mind. And, and I want to be clear, that didn't happen with every patient. That did, you know, many patients, oh, okay. You know, I'll give you a card. Here, here we go. Um, but doctor and office manager were completely surprised at how many patients said, oh, that seems like a lot of work for you guys. Just go ahead and run my card today. So what a great surprise. And I guess when you read the headline, you might be wondering, is that a good surprise or a bad surprise? Well, it's a very good surprise. Now we have been through two recall cycles with this office since then. And so now I have data from this office on what was the success of running those cards on file. Very, very, very good. 
Um, there were occasional glitches where a card had expired or something had happened uh, or the balance wasn't available or whatever. But uh, all of those were settled. Uh, and it was really, uh, it did create some administrative work, you know, for the office, um, but uh, just went really well. And they've done it now. They only did that for the first round of hygiene appointments because this was all new to them. And their theory was that once they've gone through it once and they realize how quickly they'll get the check from Delta, and they do typically get the check very quickly from Delta, they felt like the next time they could just collect a time of service. And now they've been through another entire recall cycle where they're now collecting a time of service and seeing great results. And both of their comments after we did the debrief and we looked at the data and we looked at how many of their existing patients did they lose when they dropped Delta, uh, both doctor and office manager said, Gary, that the great news is that we lost way fewer patients than we thought. So wow. there's one doctor's surprise. I, I admire the creativity. I'll leave it up to you as a listener to decide if you would like to do it that way. Um, I wouldn't because of the increased uh, administrative burden, uh, but it could fit a particular practice as it fit this practice. Uh, so I thought this would be a, a fun story to share with you and the Less Insurance Dependence podcast, because, you know, the truth is when you now have to collect a time of service from, from that Delta, this never had to pay when it's a adult hygiene appointment. They're not going to like that. that. That's an upset. You know, it's a potential upset. But in most cases, while they're not happy about it, they love your office. They don't want to go anywhere else. They'll follow your, your lead, you know. Don't expect them to be happy about pulling out a check and, or pulling out a debit credit card and giving you a credit card. But uh, most, of, most of the time they understand, they go along with it. Uh, this office went the extra mile uh, and it benefited them. Um, and I'll leave it up to you to decide if that's a strategy that you would like to apply in your practice. Yeah, I want to brag on this particular client uh, because it's just, like I said, such a wonderful human being. This is one of those people you want to do go above and beyond. Just the person he is, you know, the way he carries himself. I even had me do a presentation to his study club about, you know, how to replace uh, Delta with um, Google once he had had the success. I remember leading up to that over a two year period, he really, really, really focused on ranking for all the keywords. So he didn't need Delta pretty much at that point. In other words, he was getting so many new patients coming from Google because he was ranking for like 200 keywords. And not only that, he beefed up his high value services side of his practice. He's literally said, here are the six things I want to go after. I want to dominate these in all my neighboring towns and cities. And, um, you know, he crushed it. So, I mean, I think the big lesson for me, um, you know, I guess in this new year mindset, I'm kind of thinking of lessons is that he was proactive. He he didn't just react, right? He was thinking about things in advance um, uh, along with his team. And of course, he had an awesome office manager, like you said. And together, they were proactively creating the circumstances in their practice to create success. Yes, it's a big change, but because he was proactive, because he did the SEO because he did lots of other things. I think he was able to like totally set himself up for success in, uh, in, in, uh, in that transition. I completely agree. Um, and did the work, uh, you know, did the work, uh, did the leadership, provided the leadership to his team uh, and was proactive rather than being reactive. Um, and all those qualities are great. Well, as we come to the finish line today, uh, I want to bring it back full circle to the opening and wish all of you an amazing new year coming up. Hope you get some time over the, the uh, new year holiday weekend, new year's holiday weekend to uh, be with loved ones, be with family, be with friends, uh, to celebrate, maybe to reflect on all the wonderful things we have to be grateful for. And it is our fondest wish that 2024 uh, be your best year yet. Um uh, on that note, I want to take a minute and say thanks to all of you. Uh, we appreciate each and every one of you as a listener. Let your friends know about the Less Insurance Dependence Podcast. There's always room for more listeners. Uh, but for now, I want to simply say thank you for the privilege of your time. Happy New Year. And Naren and I look forward to continuing uh, the Less Insurance Dependence into 2024 and beyond. Uh, thanks for joining us. <laughs>